you there. <coughs> Now, let me first thank our international guests for extremely interesting uh, presentations and the very valuable comments you gave to us while we were preparing this uh, report. They were very useful and uh, I think we'll uh, continue to cooperate with you in the future once we update the paper. Uh, my presentation will focus on well-being, one of the important dimensions of sustainability, and Finland. Um, let me pick up this first. Now, the, the first question is, uh, why did Citra in the first place uh, uh, undertake this uh, project of preparing this kind of paper? Um, there are internal and external reasons for this. Uh, internally, uh, we have been working on the sustainability issues and, and and well-being challenges uh, for about two years now in Citra. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I think we work on well-being since 2006 already. Um, and uh, we have a strategy that is uh, emphasizing sustainable well-being, but we haven't yet elaborated that uh, to any great extent uh, 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 to the outside world. So this report is uh, supporting our strategy work and helps us to define uh, the future direction for our organization. But we also have um, um, external motivations. Uh, there's been increasing interest in Finland uh, about the, uh, uh, the actual lack of vision uh, for our country and, and for the future. Uh, we have lots of discussion about uh, the need for change, structural change, but there has been really uh, a lack of uh, uh, discussion about the direction to which we should change. And we hope to contribute uh, to that discussion with this paper. Uh, there is also a good timing uh, for, uh, the, for this paper because there is this uh, uh, ongoing uh, process uh, uh, of preparing a future uh, foresight paper for the government. And we were lucky to have this paper out uh, just in time to, to support that process too. Uh, but I would like to underline at this point that this is the first cut uh, of these ideas and we will continue to work on these issues and we hope to cooperate with all interested parties and, and prepare a new version of this report at some point in the not too distant future. Uh, so we hope these ideas will uh, improve uh, and we'll get new ideas from our uh, collaborators and, and we'll have an even uh, um, better vision in the future. Now, the Finnish uh, policy discourse has focused on two uh, areas of the society uh, in the past. One is the economy, the competitiveness, the productivity, the efficiency uh, of our economy, and the other is the uh, wel welfare state. Uh, the public sector, basically. And now, this has been an important uh, uh, discourse for years because um, the main challenges to our well-being uh, had to do with uh, material well-being um, ever since the early 1960s when Finland was still a poor country. Uh, so improving well-being was mainly uh, an economic growth issue. But this framework, we think, is now becoming too narrow we need to in incorporate the environment, we also need to in incorporate the civil society, and we need to discuss uh, anew about the uh, na changing nature of well-being. We think uh, that uh, well-being is the ultimate goal of all of our activities. Uh, economy and the welfare state are instruments in supporting uh, well-being. And civil society is an important resource uh, and arena for uh, 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 well-being to come about. And the natural environment, as was already illustrated in the previous discussion, uh, previous uh, presentations, is the uh, or provides the st strict uh, planetary boundaries to all of our activities. So we cannot anymore neglect the nature in our policy making. And all these uh, aspects of our society, they are tightly interconnected. 
So we cannot anymore um, try to improve one dimension of sustainability and, and forget about the rest. We need to have a more holistic uh, picture because uh, once we um, improve one dimension, we are also affecting the others. And at best, we would like to have solutions which improve sustainability and well-being in many dimensions at the same time. And in, in this report that we published today, uh, we have tried to identify such principles that would uh, support sustainable well-being uh, along many dimensions at the same time. Now, if we focus on well-being, there are new challenges to it, as was already referred to in, in Job's uh, presentation. The welfare state uh, mainly focused on basic material needs, and they are still important. We have increasing socioeconomic differences, uh, even in Finland. Um, however, uh, the majority of the people are not suffering from deprivation problems anymore. But all of, all of us have new challenges to our well-being, and many of them have to do with mental well-being, psychological and socio social needs uh, of human beings. And these needs are now under pressure in today's transformation. There's increased uncertainty, complexity, normlessness, materialism, and hurry in our everyday lives. There's also an increasing problem of choice. Uh, the Finnish society is now more affluent than ever. Uh, we have more freedoms than ever. And there's also increasing market pressure surrounding our everyday lives. So we have lots of choices as to how to live our lives, and we are not very rational in making those choices. So we end up with all kinds of unintended consequences to our well-being. Some complexity scientists have described this situation as a complexity gap between the ever more complex lives that we're living and the limited uh, mental capacities that we have to deal with this complexity. They say that there is there is an increasing gap between the challenge and, and our capacity to deal with it. And as a result, we have increasing life management problems and, and, and also uh, negative trends in terms of mental well-being. Um, and we are living increasingly harried lives. We, especially the people in, the, in their rush uh, uh, years, uh, they, uh, they have... Uh, more and more activities at work, but at the same time, they also have more and more uh, activities in their leisure time. And this is natural because we have more and more options to do things. We engage in more activities. But since we have fixed amount of time and mental resources, we often end up with this uh, crowded situation in our lives. We haven't really learned to live in this new environment very well yet. And it's important to try to uh, speed up this learning process so that we as a culture uh, would be able to live more balanced lives in the future. Now, we have uh, come up with some policy principles uh, in this uh, publication that could help uh, well-being in the future. Perhaps the most important thing is to broaden our understanding of well-being and deepen it. Uh, we should uh, have a more holistic perspective to the factors that drive our well-being in our everyday lives. Uh, the, the material factors are still important, but we need to consider these other needs that we have, these social needs and psychological needs and their drivers, and also the meaningfulness of our lives. Um, the other thing is that um, both individuals and communities uh, uh, would need support in their everyday lives. We would like to have more customized services, especially personal and household services. It would be good to have more participatory policymaking methods that would incorporate the wisdom of people in policymaking. We could have more public-private people partnerships. We could have platforms for dialogue, cooperation and experimentation. We could open the public data more and more uh, for civil, civil society to use and also the other assets of the public sector, like buildings. And we should have more clear and coherent uh, organizations to work in. All these would empower individuals and communities. 
we could also develop more coherent and sociable living environments. Uh, nature is a good example of, uh, of uh, uh, an environment that people feel good at. But we should aim for that kind of uh, coherence in our built environment also. Uh, we could have uh, more plazas in our cities and, and pedestrian streets for people to meet and, and less cars. Uh, and the research suggests that we should have, uh, um, for example, uh, very clear street signage in our cities. Um, and, and that would help people to orient themselves in the daily life. And of course, we should have easier to use technologies. Now, the current uh, corporate governance model, which is focusing on uh, shareholder value, has some problems. And it seems that the future direction is to, to move towards more stakeholder-oriented uh, model, where the well-being of all the stakeholders of the firm would be taken into account. Uh, in fact, in, in the more uh, in, the, in, in the world where uh, key resources are more mobile, like human beings and uh, investment capital and customers and so forth, um, it can become an, an important competitive advantage for firms to be attractive. You cannot only serve one stakeholder group at the expense of the others. If you want to be successful, you have to be able to attract all kinds of stakeholders that are important to your operations. And finally, uh, we have to continue investing in human capital. But we need new kinds of skills, especially type of general skills that help us to uh, operate efficiently in a, in a network society. We cannot only have uh, narrow disciplinary uh, understandings and knowledge. We also need to have this kind of broad understanding, meta-knowledge uh, of the world. We need both. Now, we think that Finland has a well-being advantage that has not been used uh, adequately. The welfare state has created uh, really good conditions for uh, social equity, obviously, but also for a well-functioning economy. The Finnish economy is one of the most competitive, uh, at least in terms of structural indicators. We also have a high trust culture. We have plenty of space and nature, uh, and we have a very high quality of life as do the other Nordic countries also, by the way. Uh, our values, uh, the Nordic values, seem to support the new, more sustainable uh, way of life that is described uh, in our report. So we have good starting position uh, to, to build uh, uh, an advantage uh, for well-being. And, and this advantage would be very uh, beneficial uh, for our society and, 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 and things. We could first of all make better decisions as individuals in our organizations and, and our government because we knew the goal that we are aiming for. We knew what would be good for people if we had world-class understanding of well-being. We could also develop better living environments, the built environment, organizations, and even our culture uh, could support better well-being. We can also develop better incentives for sustainable lifestyle change uh, if we knew uh, the determinants of well-being better. Very often uh, we hope that people are so altruistic that they will change their behavior when they know that they should change. But if we can uh, tie in some incentives that directly have a positive impact to their well-being, it's easier for them to change. And there are some examples where that has taken place. So an improved understanding of well-being can also help us to come up with better incentives for sustainable lifestyle change. And then we can, we can develop better products and services uh, based on this uh, deep understanding of well-being. Because ultimately, value in products and services comes from uh, contributions to well-being. And if we had even better understanding of well-being, we could develop better products and services here in Finland. And of course, uh, there are huge markets for those kinds of innovations. Uh, everyone in the world is interested in their well-being. And if we had 
such a leaders leadership position in, in developing well-being, uh, and firms would be innovating here in Finland to develop better products and services. Finland would also become very attractive for, for investments, and, and investment uh, by the Finnish firms. And of course, both Finns and foreign experts would like to live here, because we would have the, the best living environments in the world. So this is something we want to focus on uh, in, in Citra also in the future, and we are coming up with a, a, a research report early next year uh, on these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Timo. And um, one really important point, as you mentioned in, in your presentation, is that this discussion paper really, I mean, it's a tool for Citra. It has identified issues that we can push forward in our projects and, uh, and uh, um, programs, really. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we'll take questions, and, and then we still have a chance to pose questions for the whole panel, I mean, for, the, for all our speakers today. And I think we've got something from the message board, or shall we go directly to the panel? Well, I can just ask a quick yeah. uh, question here. You speak about hurry in our lives. So should we lobby shorter work week now? <laughs> oh, that's tricky. Um, I think work is becoming increasingly uh, sort of a dispersed in time, so that we, we uh, at, at least in the knowledge intensive uh, work. We tend to work sometimes from home, uh, we take days off, but then um, the, the, the working times are not so strict anymore as they used to be. Um, uh, so I, I, I cannot really uh, take a stand on that uh, question directly, but uh, um, I think the meaningfulness of, of work is becoming, becoming increasingly important. There has to be something that people are contributing to and they feel that they can make a difference. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, if I can ask Dimitri and Jeff to come forward as well, and um, we'll still have some time for a more general debate. 